Hi, it's Miko. Welcome back to our channel. So today I'm going to show you how I turn a very, very simple IKEA mom dresser into this beautiful hidden litter box and dresser unit. I have a problem that somebody here loves to eat litter, so I always have to be careful how I place my litter box. So having a hidden litter box, unfortunately for us, is a necessity. I also usually live in very, very small apartments, so space is at a premium. So having a unit like this would be really, really helpful in ensuring that I have enough litter boxes for my cats, but I also can keep my dog safe. This is the mom that I got off of Facebook Marketplace. You can see it's missing a piece, but that's actually a really good thing. So the first thing I did is I actually measured where I would put the door. So I first checked on the outside and then I also wanted to see where the drawer was so that I could actually position it correctly. I then removed all of the drawers so that I can then look at the inside and see exactly where the door would go. And then I very carefully put it on its side and started taking everything apart. Many IKEA pieces are given their stability by the back panel, so I was very careful to remove it and not break it. And I also saved all of the nails to reuse them later. Mom was in a lot worse condition than I thought, and it was a lot more unstable, as you can see. But it was really awesome because I felt like I was channeling my grandpa, who I unfortunately never met because he passed away when I was two years old, but he was really good at working with wood. So I always felt like I had somebody else looking over my shoulder, giving me encouragement to get it done. As you can see, there was a part that was actually quite broken, and I went ahead and repaired it with a little bit of white wood putty. I used a piece of scotch tape to make sure that the outside part would be straight. So I didn't let it dry and carefully removed the tape. And you can see it looks a lot better than before, but it's still not completely filled. So I went ahead and put another layer. I then went ahead and worked on making the hole. First, I realized I had to remove the middle drawer because I really wasn't going to use it and the door was not going to fit otherwise. Then I went ahead and drilled holes to the outside of the frame that I drove. Then I went ahead and put some tape to make sure that the wood wouldn't splinter as much. And then I used my trusty jigsaw to cut the hole. As you can see, it doesn't look 100% perfect, but it looks a lot better and a lot less splintered. So then I made sure that I marked where the holes were for the kitty door and then went ahead and drilled the holes. The wood was in worse condition than I imagined, so it ended up splintering on the outside more than I expected. So I went ahead and used my wood putty and went all around so that I could then seal the edges and sand them really nicely. Once everything was dry, I put the main structure back together. If I had started with a brand new mount, this part would not have been as frustrating. But I was really excited to finish it and I started with the drawer fronts, which is the most satisfying part of this whole project. So I used a little bit of linen cloth and first I measured and then cut the linen and you can see that there's a grid so that you can really easily cut it into straight lines. I then retraced the pattern for all of my drawers. I went ahead and put glue on the drawer fronts. This is just a general all around all purpose glue. And I made sure to really spread it around everywhere so that my linen would be absolutely flat on it. And I was so excited to see how well it turned out. I was really worried that it was not going to look good and it looked fantastic. So this is where it got really exciting because I could really see my project come through. The next step was framing up my drawers. So I went ahead and measure the wood and cut it with a handsaw. Looking back on this, I wish I had rented a miter saw, but I have to be completely honest, I was not used to using power tools. And I felt really, really worried when I went to the local hardware store and realized that the miter saw looked really scary. So I went ahead and did it by hand, but if I had done it by miter saw, it would have been a lot faster. Once my pieces were ready, I went ahead and glued them in. I got inspiration from this video from Drew from Lone Fox. Huge shout out to him for 
really giving me the idea of doing the top and bottom parts of the drawers first and then doing the sides. I will put a link to his video in the description. I highly recommend you check him out. His videos are addictive. I love them. So Drew, thank you so much. Once I had the top and drawer of every drawer completed, then I went ahead and put some weights on them and let the glue dry. Once the glue had dried, I went ahead and measured and cut each piece for the sides and went ahead and glued it into place. I could have definitely used nails for this process, but I was not 100% sure that it would not break the drawers front. So I went ahead and just used glue and I'm happy it turned out really great anyway. I went ahead and measured measured around where the door would go and then I measured from the bottom and from the side to make sure that I was cutting it completely off because the door had to slide in and out. So the hole was going to be a little bit longer than the kitty door. I use my trusty scotch tape method and I actually found out in this project that it's a lot easier to actually just draw on top of the scotch tape. So if you're doing it, highly recommend starting with that. Then I went ahead and make the holes for the corners to make it easy for my jigsaw to go through and then cut it off. This part was a little bit awkward because it was not completely straight, but it worked out really well as you can see. There's only a little bit of a plasticky layer that's on top of the wood on the drawer, so I just needed a very, very light sand to make sure that it looked good. And I checked it and you can see, slides in and out perfectly. So once I was done with this, I took the drawer apart because I knew that I had to replace the front drawer with a much taller drawer. I was a little bit worried about making sure that the holes would actually match the one on the original drawer. So what I decided to do was to just clamp the drawer to my new drawer front and drill all the way through the holes. When I removed all the pieces, I realized that the holes were two different sizes. So I actually used two different drill bits for this to make sure that the original hardware would fit. After drilling the first hole, I also realized that I didn't wanna drill all the way through the front door, of course. So I went ahead and used this really handy little trick of using tape just to put a marker so that I knew how far down I would have to drill. As usual with these projects, the first two or three holes were a little bit more challenging. And once I got that figured out, the next holes went super fast. The final step was to measure the length of the drawer because I had to shorten it because the original IKEA drawer has a little hole in the front that you can slide the bottom into, but I was going to put a reinforcement so I didn't need this. And I used my trusty little handsaw to cut that section off. I then went ahead and put all of the original hardware back on and I was so excited that my plan had worked. Everything fit really well, slid the bottom in and the drawer could be reassembled. And then I put the back onto the frame. As I said, IKEA furniture is actually given structural integrity by the backing. So I was really careful to put a lot of nails. I used a lot of the IKEA nails that I was able to salvage. And I also added a few extra nails of my own to make sure that this unit would be 100% structurally sound. The front drawer was almost complete, but I knew that I wanted to give a little bit more ventilation and a little bit more light to the litter box. So I went ahead and marked the spots where I was going to use my circular saw to cut through and make a window for Kitty. I initially was going to have the window go all the way to the bottom, but I know that some litter sometimes does fall out. And I also know that Kitty likes to dig outside of the litter box for some reason, so I didn't want her to get caught in the cloth. So I went ahead and cut it a little bit higher, but still it's enough that it gives it really nice light. This is the very first time that I use a circular saw. It was actually brand new. So after making a couple of trial cuts, I figured out what I needed to do to be able to make a plunge cut. I don't know why I started with something so difficult as my first thing, but here you go. And obviously use a tape method and use the leftover drawer front to work as a guide. This worked really, really well. It was super easy. I don't know why I was so afraid of using a circular saw.
Now, this was my first time using this saw and I didn't realize that it had a system where I could pull up the blade. And because I didn't realize it, I had to go ahead and put a little bit of spacer so that I could do a plunge cut that wouldn't cut beyond the area that I wanted to do. And then I used this, again, my handsaw, which was not the best tool for the job, but again, the best tool for the job is the one you have. So I went with it. Because the circular saw is round, it doesn't cut all the way through. And so it just needed a little bit of extra being cut off. And that's where the handsaw came in really, really handy. And I was so excited to remove the middle piece and to see that my cuts were so clean. You can see the difference between the old wood of the mound that was obviously used and the new wood. And then I went ahead and still used my wood putty all around to clean it up. Next, I had to put, of course, a linen cloth and you can see again that it was super easy to see where the line was and to cut it straight. And I went ahead and put extra glue and I put quite a bit, especially around the window because I really wanted to make sure that this was very well adhered so that I wouldn't have any issues even if Kitty decided to scratch on it. Next, I went ahead and framed the outside, same process as I did with the other drawer. I was really happy to see how well this looks and you can see, you can see through the cloth. So there's going to be great light and great ventilation, but the look is still very uniform and looks great. Once the glue had set, I went ahead and used wood putty in the corners and then went ahead and painted the top. Now I started like this, kind of freehanding it, and then realized that I am a very messy person. So I used a little bit of a leftover paper towel to help me make sure that I wasn't going to get my raffia cloth all dirty. Before putting the bottom drawer back together, I went ahead and put the support that was going to hold and give stability to the bottom of the drawer where the litter box is going to go. And finally, it was time to place the door knobs. I was really excited to use these. I went ahead and placed them in the middle and then measured so that I would know where to place all of the other ones. They were super easy to just drill through and then go ahead and screw them in place. Finally, it was ready. It was time to put my trusty mat and my litter. And this is the final project. Kitties were really interested. They used it right away. I was really surprised, as you can see, and it was super easy to open and clean the litter box and then go ahead and close it again. So this build turned out really beautiful, much better than I thought it would. I'm so excited to use it. My ladies have already baptized it, as you've seen, and best of all, it keeps Iberia out of the litter box and safe from eating kitty litter. If you like this kind of video and you're looking for a little bit more inspiration, not just on builds, but also on how to live a better life with our animals, then you might like some of my other videos and I'll link them for you over here. Thank you for watching us. Give your dog and cats a kiss from us and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!